there's only two types of causation. The second causation, you can label it over towards the personal agent, is what's called agent causation. So it's either event-event causation or agent causation. Those are exhaustive categories. Um, when I was teaching this class actually across the hall, <clears throat> one of the students that I got to know a little bit better, Mitchell, um, him and I would kind of banter before class, sometimes during class. And so one of the exams that I gave, you know, everybody's taking a test, so he was in the very back seat, and so I went back there. I said, hey, Mitchell, I, I, have, uh, I have some information for you concerning the test. He's like, yeah, what's that? I said, well, if on the true and false, if it's not true, it's false. And he's like, thanks, prof, thanks. I can figure that out, you know? Because true and false are exhaustive categories for true and false questions. If it's not true, of course it's false. If it's not false, of course it's true. If I'm thinking of a whole number of integer and it's not even, it's got to be odd. Because those are exhaustive categories. So, two types of causation and it's exhaustive categories. Event, event causation and agent causation. So if the cause of the universe is not event, event causation, she whiz, I wonder what it is got to be agent causation. Kalam argument. Universe had a cause. It was either event, event causation or agent causation. It's either A or B. It cannot be event, event causation. It can't be A. Well, now let's see. If it's either A or B, and it's not A, gee whiz, let me see. I wonder what it is. I think it's B. Yeah, it's got to be B because it's an exhaustive category. So it's not an event that caused the universe, it's a personal agent that caused the universe. And what can we tell about this personal agent? It's got to be pretty intelligent, incredibly intelligent to build a universe. It's got to be incredibly powerful. It's got to be, the, this personal agent's got to be capable of choice. Why? Because there is a choice that had to be exerted in order for this universe to be built. It didn't happen randomly. This building did not happen randomly. Somebody had to make a choice. Talbot East building. Somebody made a choice that they wanted to build that building. Somebody exercised choice and said, we need another building for Talbot Seminary. And that choice started some events that happened as a result of a personal choice. This personal agent has to be timeless because it exists prior to the universe. And prior to the universe, there's no time, space, matter, or energy. So this personal agent has to be timeless. Another way to put that is eternal. Non-material. Spaceless. That opens up the category of possibly being omnipresent because he's not a material substance. And it's just not energy. God is not energy. He's something other than energy. He's a soul. He's a disembodied soul. He's a person, but he doesn't have a body. And this personal agent is causeless. I got this question at Cal Poly Pomona two, three weeks ago when I did my stump the professor, and I talked, I used this argument. Somebody said, well, where did God come from? I, I know I'm going to get the question all the time. It doesn't ruffle my feathers, but it's, it's, it's not a good question because people misunderstand. But it comes to their mind, so they ask the question, and it's okay. So he said, well, where did God come from? Kind of like, what caused God? And I said, well... Only things that have beginnings need to have causes. God never had a beginning. Therefore, he need not have a cause, nor does he have a cause. Because he never had a beginning.